Hello, this is Teresa and Tim from Juddlebug and Blue Dot. And we're currently hanging, <laughs> suspended <laughs> on a drone above the Blue Dot Festival site. We are, um, we are. We're now this, this is actually a picture from last year's um, Blue Dot. This is, uh, in fact, you can probably just see sort of just the craft work on the level stage <laughs> in front of the little telescope. So that was an amazing night to remember. We're sorry, we obviously we won't be able to... Uh, be at the festival site this weekend, but we got an amazing um, weekend of, of, lo of live events, science panels, talks, uh, music, family programs, and a lot more to enjoy this weekend. Yeah, it's Blue Dot's Weekend in Outer Space, and uh, we've got performances from Orbital, Daniel Avery, I'm reading this, Ronnie Size and Animatronic, Science Talks from Andrew and with the wonderful Brian Cox and Robin Ince, Jill Tart and Dim Al-Khalili. Yep, and on, on Sunday we've actually got Tim Burgess, our old friend Tim Burgess is going to be Yay. curating a, a bunch of uh, Twitter listening parties, this amazing thing he's been doing over, over lockdown, um, so that we've got uh, Who's Contributing New Order, we've got Hot Chip, we've got Metronomy, um, and then after we've enjoyed that sort of Sunday of, um, of uh, best of blue dot sessions we've, in the evening, we've got the whole um, set from Elbow from 2012 from the Live at Jodrell Bank. Minus the rain, because you'll all be at home, so that's good. I don't know who was there in 2012. <laughs> it was pretty well. But uh, it did get rather damp. I can remember we were at the back of the... We were at the back, we were very wet. Back of the festival <laughs> crowd, singing along at the end of the set in the pouring rain. There were people dancing under their umbrellas. It was a, it was a great night. But we're going to relive that on, um, on Sunday evening. And uh, yeah, it, the weekend. yeah, keep under cover if it does happen to be raining. Yeah. I, I'm also involved in Blue Dot. You might have seen us hosting some of the events and giving some of the talks at Blue Dot, but it's uh, not really my main job. <laughs> my main job is uh, is a, being an astronomer. So I, I'm, I work at the observatory and in the Jodrell Bank Centre for Astrophysics. I'm an associate director there, and I, I teach physics and astronomy to undergraduates at the University of Manchester, which Jodrell Bank's um, part of. How old am I? 56. <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> so for, so I, I, I don't know, so for 30 odd years I've been, uh, I've been working on astronomy. My main interest is, is exploding stars. Um, so I spend a lot of time studying um, uh, exploding stars and looking at them with telescopes around the world if I, when I get the opportunity. Um, and also sort of doing modelling of their explosions to, see, to understand why. Not in cluster Why? They, no, no, not modelling. Yeah, you're right. So <laughs> Lego, Lego models of exploding stars. No, computer models. Compu mostly computer <laughs> models. Occasionally, when I'm feeling particularly clever, which is rare these days, um, I'll do a little um, uh, pencil, pen and paper model. So tell me what Jodrell Bank is. Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> I got distracted. Um, so Jodrell Bank, uh, it's, it's an observatory. Um, so it's a radio telescope observatory mainly. Um, so that in the picture behind us, you can see the Lovell telescope, which is probably the most famous, just just above the Great head. hat over Tim's hat. Um, yeah. And that's uh, that's probably the most famous telescope at Jodrell, but it's not the only one. There's uh, there's another three radio telescopes at Jodrell Bank, and another five spread across the country in the in the Merlin network. Um, and radio telescopes pick up radio waves coming from outer space, um, so they give us this different view of the of the universe than we would get with our eyes. So we see different stuff. Um, we see, you know, for example, with your eyes on a clear night, like it was um, recently, um, we, see, um, we see stars scattered across the sky. With a radio telescope, you see something that look a bit like stars to the radio telescope, but in fact, the uh, supermassive black holes. So scattered all the way across the sky and the hearts of, of distant galaxies. So we learn a different, um, facet of the universe really by looking at it with, with radio with radio eyes. Okay so uh, so as you may know my name's Teresa Anderson and I run the Discovery Centre at Dodger Bank that's the bit that welcomes people onto the site and we run um, uh, you know lots of events we host the Blue Dot Festival and um, when we're not doing that we've got um, lots of uh, programs for kids lots of school stuff and you know, one of the other things we do is we uh, organise and look after the fact that Jodrell Bank is the UK's newest World Heritage Site, which is something that Tim and I have worked on for over 10 years, can you believe it? Um, and we were very pleased last year, just before Blue Dot last year, um, UNESCO made us 
the UK's latest World Heritage Site. So we've got a really fantastic site at Jodrell Bank where we do tons of world leading research into outer space and exposing stars and things like Tim's just said, but also we do loads of education um, and loads of sort of cultural happenings and activities like Blue Dot with its fantastic music, arts and culture program. So it's a really fantastic place to work. We're both really proud of it and we both, both love it. And it's really great to welcome you here for the weekend virtually um, for the virtual Blue Dot weekend in outer space. And in case you're wondering why we're not being <laughs> particularly socially distanced, it's because uh, oh, yeah, yeah. I, I happen to be Teresa. We're married to each other. <laughs> so, uh, so, uh, I don't yeah. have to be wearing our masks. Yeah, absolutely. Wear a mask. Yeah. <laughs> the science says wear a mask. So obviously we've all been affected um, by the lockdown. Um, and at Jodrell Bank in particular, we had to, we had basically had to effectively close down the site. So all the telescopes had to, had to stop operating. We've all been working from home. I mean, at some, some level, for, for an astronomer, we gather lots of data with our telescopes and sometimes that data can sort of pile up and up and up and you're sort of peering over the edge of it on your desk. Uh, it maybe gives you an opportunity to, uh, to analyse that data so it doesn't necessarily stop you working if you're not gathering more data. But yeah, we were champing at the bit really to get the telescopes back and up and running. Uh, and we've gradually been uh, progressing through that um, safely. So we started with the, the 42 foot telescope, which if you've been to Jodrell Bank is is on the control building, so it's the it's forty two feet in diameter, which is a small telescope Just for old us. Money. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Uh, what, was it, what would that be? Twelve point <laughs> six meters or something. I think. Um, so, in, so it's a small telescope um, uh, for us, but still quite quite a large thing. So that got running first, um, and then we got the Mark II telescope running, which is the second largest telescope on the site. So also that, grade one listed. It is, yeah. It's a grade, grade one, listed. one listed telescope. Yeah, yeah, just like the Lovell telescope. Yeah. Um, same age as me, born in 1964. Um, so spring chicken. <laughs> yeah. um, so that's up and running. So that's great because that was able to uh, link up with uh, a network of other radio telescopes across the across Europe. So that's the European VLBI network that we work with. Um, and that was, uh, we were able to sort of join forces with that again after a time out. Uh, and towards the end of the summer, hopefully, we'll get the Lovell Telescope uh, up, and, up and running again. Yeah, and there's some people doing some work on it at the minute anyway. So. Yeah, there was a bit of engineering work we had to finish off, yeah. so it's, we're able to sort of crack on with that. And, and you know, uh, we're at Jodrell Bank virtually at the moment, rather than actually, because the site isn't open to mm. most staff, the engineering staff, the security staff, the people there. But um, we're not open to the public yet. Um, we are working on, you know, towards getting it open, but as you can imagine, it's quite a complicated thing. It's a little bit more complicated even than a supermarket. Mm -hmm. So there's lots of things like one-way systems and people wearing masks and, you know, how do we get our staff kitted up with PPE and all the right signage. And um, I wouldn't say it was um, lots of goalposts moving around, but first it's two metres, then it's one metre, then it's, you know, so we're all, we're all sort of looking at the government guidance and, making sure that we've got it all ready to open safely. Um, and, and what we'll be doing is what most places are doing now, which you'll be able to book in advance, get time tickets for a particular slot. Our cafe will be operating as a takeaway. And we'll have a sort of a, a sh shop that's a bit like a festival shop, so you can't walk around it and browse, but you can spot things. And so I'll have one of them and one of them. And one of the things that's um, uh, really important for us is to make sure we do it right. So what we're, we're going to try and do is open the outside first so that um, uh, people can enjoy our World Heritage Site and our fantastic little telescope. Thankfully, it's the summer and we'll be doing some outside talks and things. So I think um, it'll, be, it'll be a nice day out, uh, a good place to visit. The toilets will be brilliant. I was reading something the other day saying toilets are now the thing. Teresa follows <laughs> this Twitter feed about, about toilets in public do, spaces. <laughs> <laughs> They're very important. <laughs> so, you know, it's all, we're going to um, get everything absolutely tip top. Hopefully open sometime in August. If you keep an eye on our website, um, we'll let you know. Meantime, we're doing this fantastic thing called Science Learning at Home which has got loads of activities and talks and things on the website. So if you need a fix of science for your families, just check out our science learning at home. We think probably once we open, we're going to be doing quite a lot of that for schools online as well. 
is because they've got particular challenges at the minute as well. So yeah, lots of work in the background and we're looking forward to welcoming everybody back really, really mm-hmm. soon. So while we've been um, shut down in terms of our normal operations, we've had um, our new gallery going up in a very socially distanced manner because um, the way it works is there's a lot of sort of pouring of foundations and stuff and actually people working like that are a outside and b miles away from each other and so our new gallery project for our um, heritage gallery which is you know because of our world heritage site status and stuff is still on track which is fantastic because a lot of building projects across i was gonna say across the country across the world um aren't on track so you know it's fantastic that this this project is still going really well um, and we're still hopefully fingers crossed touch wood etc um going to open next summer so that project's still been going that's been supported by the national lottery heritage fund and dcms and various other fantastic people who um, really helped us you know make make it a reality it's going to really fantastic yeah. storytelling I mean, about if you come if you think about if you've been to blue dot when, when you arrive from the into the festival site the main entrance you go through the um you go through the arboretum um so you sort of come in through the side of the hedge effectively into the arboretum and you cut across and the campsite sort of on the far side of the arboretum and the festival site will be to your right basically on your right hand side as you go through the the arboretum, the sort of tree park, the gardens, if you like, and Dodger Bank. That's where this this building's um, being constructed. Yeah, um, and it's going to be it's going to be um, it's going to be really sort of blend into the, the landscape. It's going to have a green roof, so it's going to look like a um, sort of a new hill. It's going to appear, and mm-hmm. um, and when we do open um, uh, in August, people will be able to go and walk around the edge of it and have a look and see um, how progress is you know how how it's going and what's happening is there a new wall up and all those sorts of things mm. things that are very exciting for me because i can i can tell you having worked on that for eight years or something it's amazing to think that you get to a point where you've written loads of stuff and said please give me the money and then it turns into people making things so that's always a good mm. point to get to. we're currently working on the on the exhibition bit for the middle so there's an exhibition and a sort of planetarium space and the exhibition is basically constructed from uh, uh, sections of the original surface of the, the, yeah, the Lovell fantastic. telescope, which we had to replace recently. So uh, it's going to be a very interesting space to, to visit when it opens at the end of next summer. Yeah, so that's something to look forward to, as well as Blue Dot 2021, but more of that later. So one of the things that um, has been a bit of a challenge for us over this period is, of course, um, the Discovery Centre, which is a public area of Social Bank, kind of operates as a social enterprise so we don't get a lot of funding we're not like a museum or a gallery that gets national funding from government so the day we shut our doors which was the week before the government lockdown um our income fell by 85 percent so that's that's a real challenge for us and you know you'll have heard about buildings uh, businesses going up business and people losing staff and what have you and it's you know, we're kind of facing the same challenges. So if anybody wants to help us this weekend, we'd be really grateful. Um, and you can find out how to do that by, by looking on the web. Um, but basically, there's three main ways you could help us. You could make a donation, um, and there's donation buttons on the website. Or you could buy vouchers for things, um, like our community ticket scheme, which is like when you buy a ticket for yourself in advance, you can also pay for a ticket for somebody who perhaps can't afford it. Um, or you could perhaps purchase an annual pass, which means you can get into our site for free um, all year round, which is very nice. So, you know, there's various ways that you could help us out um, while we're, we're, we're plodding our way back. Um, to get in the site back to full numbers because actually when people normally come on our site and pay for tickets to get in and um, you know buy lovely coffees in our shops and love uh, in, our, in our cafe and lovely things in our shop obviously that pays for our staff and our schools work and what have you so if you wanted to help us out with that we would be really grateful so thanks very much in advance for that for those of you who, who don't know um, the name blue dot actually comes from a um, uh, some writing by an astronomer, an American astronomer called Carl Sagan, that wrote a piece called The Pale Blue Dot, uh, which is a really rather beautiful bit of writing about the, the view of the Earth from space. So it was a project that he did with the uh, Voyager spacecraft where it had flown sort of millions of miles away from the Earth and it turned around and looked back at the Earth and took a photo. 
And in that photo, the Earth was so distant that it was just this tiny pale blue dot. And he sort of talks about how, um, how you know, everybody we've ever known or everybody who's ever lived, whatever, whether they're good people, bad people, whatever, all on this, all on this tiny pale blue dot. And it sort of um, encapsulates uh, this sense of um, fragility of the planet, that it's this tiny speck sort of floating in the vastness of space. And so it's not just about space exploration, um, it's about um, planetary protection. So it's about um, the environment and, and the challenges that we're facing at the moment with climate change and so on. And I think for us, that was what, you know, that was one of the things we wanted to get across in the, in the festival so um, so that's what we try and we try and get across in the concept of the blue dot festival itself yeah, yeah. I, think. I think so and i think you know it's really interesting that we work with a team of people because you know we're based at jodrell bank but we know, don't know an awful lot about doing festivals so we work with fantastic festival people but from the fields and into number four and various other people to put on blue dot you know they bring their fantastic expertise but you know, it's not like we all disagree about this. We all really value the environment and sustainability. And so we've got this real sort of meeting of minds and hearts on actually putting that at the, at the real core of what's important about the festival. We really, really like it. And it's funny because um, we've kind of been working with the same people on things like this. Oh, Tim's disappeared. Oh, there he is. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Someone just upset. But since oh, 2011, oh. I think it was, wasn't it, when we first started? It was, yeah. Because we, we, Tim and I, are, are mad keen about the fact that science is part of culture. A lot of people in science are very interested in music and festivals and what have you. But a lot of people, um, you know, across, across society think that science and culture are different things. And really, they all involve creativity and people being good at their jobs and people being excited about things and interested and curious and... And so for us, you know, there's a kind of a, a, a sort of a continuum, you know, right across science and culture and the arts and you know, creativity and, um, you know, determination and all those sorts of things to do anything really um, that involves, you know, sort of massive endeavours, human endeavours sort of thing. And what, what we're really keen on doing is when we first started working at bringing people into Jodra Bank, which is about 2006, six seven, we started to think about, OK, how can we combine science with other things so that people who come say to hear some music will encounter some science and think oh that's quite interesting or oh I've looked through a telescope for the first time and seen you know Jupiter or Venus or whatever it is and so there's sort of a kind of mixing and, and, and melding over the boundaries kind of thing and we started in 2011 was it 2011 mm -hmm. yeah 2011 with their flaming lips which was a uh, Live from Jodrell Bank, Live Transmissions from Bank. Is number one. Yeah, yeah. Well, hello everybody. I'm, I'm Wayne. I play in the band The Flaming Lips. This is the first ever festival held here under the beloved shadow of the, the giant Lavelle telescope here at Jodrell Bank. Wonderful we're here. I mean, whoever was able to convince the astronomers here um, and thought of this, especially associated with the Flaming Lips show, I think it's amazing. I think is not just curious about music or going to a show, you know, they're, they're just curious about the wonders of the world. UFOs that are kind of looking for a place to land, they're hoping to land in time for our show. Well, they've come a long ways. I think we, we have them on the guest list always, every show anyway. <laughs>
I've always thought UFOs existed and now being here at Jaw Drill Bank, it's proven it to be true. And they're watching them, they've got them in sight there. So that's awesome, isn't it? feeling small in comparison to this gargantuan majestic mega structure behind me isn't it wonderful <laughs> feeling small is a great thing you know in comparison to something so magnificent you know? You been to the moon? Well, I have. Well, you know, when you go to the moon, uh, yeah, you look back at Earth, you feel insignificant. Yeah. Have you been to Mars? <laughs> I know. You just keep going. Yeah. usually when I'm not here is just a pit of despair right <laughs> This awe that's in the air, this is perfect. Oh look, look, it's turning. This is just amazing. So that was, and, and you know, it's the, the gang from Kendall calling, fantastic sister festival of ours, um, you know, did a fantastic job and, and it was amazing. I didn't sleep for like a month before I'm thinking, oh, what's going to happen? And it was British just... sheep power as well. Um, oh yeah, British sleep power. It was just amazing event, absolutely mm. amazing.
We close our eyes and we're all in it and we're all in it and we're all 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 in it and we're all You know, we went on from that and did, you know, uh, we repeated these sort of one night events and, and the music programme got bigger and the science programme well, got mean, bigger. Yeah, I mean, that first, that first, it was the one day things, weren't they? Yeah. Like, so Flaming Lips headlining in the, in the evening. In the I evening, think the music yeah. started at maybe three. Yeah, maybe something three like four o'clock or something. Something like that. And then we had a few, we put a few talks on in one of the buildings. Yeah, yeah. And put a few little pop-up gazebos outside yeah and they were just gigantic queues weren't they we thought oh For everything. oh <laughs> maybe actually people do want to listen <laughs> to these science stuff yeah. yeah and so we sort of did this for a few years and then um, it gradually became apparent um that it was quite hard to get lots of thousands of people i'm thinking of the elbow gig actually well, elbow was the second one you in know, 2012, yeah. in into the site and out of the site on the same night and um, particularly when everybody's leaving right after the final song and you know something like All rain happens time. or yeah. you know you get let down by your bus company or mm. whatever it is it, it becomes there's quite a lot of pressure on the one night and of course everybody turns up at the same time and not that i'm obsessed or anything but everyone wants then wants to go to the loo at the same time and then everybody wants a cup of tea at the same time and then everyone wants a burger at the same time or a beer at the same so it's kind of you know it's quite pressured having a one night event mm. Or one, day, you know, afternoon, evening event, and so we sort of thought we should chill a bit, yeah. <laughs> settle into it, and we kind of thought we should do the blue dot weekends, didn't we? Hmm. And and you know, a lot of the same people over the years, or people coming in and out and stuff in the fantastic teams of people that we work with. Um, 
and and now you know it's a phenomenon people I remember people saying at the start well what is it is it a music event or is it a science event it's like you, we can't decide okay like, yeah that's the point people. <laughs> <laughs> that is the point you yeah. can't decide because they're not that one thing or another mm. and it's kind of got its own character now mm. and um it's fantastic absolutely fantastic so i'm hoping this weekend is a small taste of it you know we're all raring to get back to juggle and do it all again but um yeah hopefully this weekend we'll get a flavor of it we've got some such fantastic people you know uh, lined up to do some stuff for us so yeah we're looking forward to it most of you can see the giant now turn the telescope now turned into a screen over here we're gonna turn us off for just a second and you're gonna watch a little bit of that it's about this place it's about the inventor of the telescope it's about people uh, and ideas um, humans that are curious um, humans that are ambitious and then as soon as you watch that we'll play a couple of more songs so here it is here it is all right We're receiving a transmission. Zero, zero, one. I'm Bernard Lowell, uh, sitting in the control room of Joggle Bank. Hola y saludos a todos. Dharti ke baatiyon ki or se namaskar. Namaskar. Vishe shanti ho. Hartelijke groeten aan iedereen. Shalom. Tahiyatu na lil astiqa fin nujum. Ya layta ya jama'una zaman. In 1957, in rural England, one of the world's largest steerable radio telescopes in the world became operational. The, the dividing line between good and evil and science is a very, very thin one. Thin one. Thin one. Thin one. Thin one. Thin one.
Right, we, were, we wanted to pick a few highlights, highlights. of the, of, the uh, of our blue dot life from Jodrell Bank. How to choose? No, that's the challenge. <laughs> and it's actually, I mean, there's so much good stuff. I mean, and the other thing is that when you involved in running the festival you never get to see it properly. i know that's right i know so we always get to the end every you have year. a list every year i'm going to definitely see this this and this and then you know you don't get a chance to do it so. yeah. but uh, but yeah okay i mean uh elbow um so we elbow 2012 we're going to see that on sunday evening that was definitely a highlight um new order for me always new order always new order um, every time I was mad keen to, I was, I was so pleased to be able to introduce Hawkwind on stage. We've had them twice, actually, Hawkwind, but, um, but yeah, a, a great, a great favourite of mine. Um, I mean, one of the things I've, I've sort of loved doing is a sort of alternative thing with those live link-ups from stage. Oh, yeah, so we went through a little phase of um, uh, having to chat to people at various places around the world. So I had a chat yeah. to... We had, we had live connections to the Antarctica. top to, to Antarctica and to the top of the Andes Mountains in Chile, yeah, uh, and to South Africa, and had another gravitational wave place in America. So that's been brilliant. Um, I just want to shout out for Orbital. Orbital. Um, so we're going to see Orbital set, I think, uh, this weekend. But I don't know whether this is in there, but it's worth the, whether they've cut out the very bit when they come on stage. Um, they come on stage to a clip from. Uh, uh, the Carpenters did the version oh, yeah, of yeah. Calling <laughs> Occupants of <laughs> Interplanetary. Yeah. yeah, so so there's a, there's a little clip from being out <laughs> with the alien, the alien voice, and also it's it's mixed in with the sounds of pulsars recorded at Jodrell Bank and the, yeah. the waveforms, so just uh, hopefully that's in there, but have a, have a watch out for it. Yeah, and I just have to shout out, of course, for some of our fantastic scientists. So mm. one of the things that's amazing for me is seeing some of our colleagues at Jodrell Bank, you know, you know, see them in the tea room or walking around or giving lectures or something. They're rock stars and they're on stage giving talks to fantastic, you know, massive crowds of people. So that's always really great. Um, Helen Sharman, astronaut, first UK astronaut, fantastic woman. She was just amazing last year. Um, I, I just I thought she was, oh, I'm speechless. <laughs> and of course, all our fantastic, amazing people who come every year or every other year or whatever it is. So... Monica Grady is superb, Jim Al-Khalili is fantastic, Dallas Campbell, Tamsin Edwards, loads of really, really great people. And then sort of for me, music, well, craft work, oh my God, craft work, fantastic. One thing that was fun, I really loved was seeing Hannah Peel. I, I don't know if you can scroll back through Hannah Peel or, you know, listen to her show on the radio. She's amazing. Um, I think, uh, oh, the Halle Blue Planet, that was amazing. And I think, um, you know, the Clangers, the Clangers at Jodrell Bank, that's fantastic. <laughs> and uh, a surreal, amazing happening, Jean-Michel Jarre at Jodrell Bank. That was amazing too. So quite a lot of things, yeah, really. It's just, it's just yeah. incredible, actually. It's really hard to pick. Yeah, it is, it is. I'm just looking at my list here. Yeah, it's a big, long list. Just <laughs> amazing. Flaming Lips again, you know, just... Uh, I'll speak just again. It's hard, <laughs> hard to imagine that I actually got the chance to interview Wayne Coyne live on stage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Take a seat. How is my uh, microphone? Is it working? Everybody can hear me there? Yeah, it sounds like everybody can hear you. Right. Well, you don't well, know what's going to happen here, guys. Yeah, it was a lovely, uh, <laughs> exciting. I didn't know there were going to be people here. <laughs> we going to be well, we should, we, actually, we did forget to mention that. Sitting to in honest. like a coffee shop somewhere. <laughs> just... <laughs> Get a beer. I mean, so what we were just talking outside, I don't know. Who, who was here in 2011 when the Flaming Lips played last time? Oh, all right, all right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that was, a, that was a magical night, I have to say. I mean, it was a spectacular event, and we, we loved it. We totally loved it here. Which I must admit, I was incredibly nervous about, but to be honest, he's, uh, he's just such a lovely book. It was really, yeah. really easy. It was just, it's just so easy to get on. And cigarettes. Oh, and cigarettes, yeah, it was great. Yeah. No, it's been, it's, been, uh, it's been a great experience, and I hope everybody who's come has enjoyed it, and I hope you get a bit of a have a feel for what it's like over this weekend if you haven't been before and we'll hope to see you again soon. Yeah, we do. Welcome to the weekend, a weekend in outer space. Full schedules live on a weekendinouterspace.com. 
um, you'll, you'll have seen it announced around the place, it's on our Twitter feeds and Facebooks and what have you. And there's also information on that link, how you can support Jodrell and explore Blue Dot 2021, which we are all really looking forward to, which um, has our headliners, which we've already announced, of Björk, Groove Armada and Metronomy and lots of other things. So please join us this weekend and please come next year. We're really looking forward to having you back to Shuffle Bank. Tickets are on sale now. <laughs> they are. <laughs> Take care. Bye. Bye.